Debbie Appleyard, I am very sorry for this very, very late response to your question of how to get a dendrobium tangerine orchid out of the cocoa shell media. I am not saying cocoa husk, I'm saying the shell because I know exactly what you're talking about. It's two halves of a coconut that have been clamped together around the base of the orchid and happy days for those that can grow the orchid like that because it is a very, very ideal media for many, many of the subtropical climates. Not so much for us elsewhere, and I can see the conundrum. Now, please use your imagination because I actually do not have this media at my disposition. If I ever come across something similar, then I'm going to take that home and I'm going to do a demonstration with that media. But in order to get to your question, and hopefully you can forgive me for the delay, I here have something where I'm going to ask for your imagination. Consider this is suitable, the coconut husk, because of how it is so finely structured and fibered, those are the fibers I would like you to simulate that are around the roots of your dendrobium tangerinum or any other orchid that we were to get with this kind of a setup. Now, first of all, it goes without saying, soak the orchid before even attempting to go in. Secondly, accept the fact that there's probably going to be 80% of root damage no matter how careful you are. I know it sounds I'm being pessimistic about it, but I'd rather be realistic about it so that you know what you're up against. Thirdly, if you can wait to see root nubbins appearing before you're gonna do this process, you are already well on your way to making sure your orchid doesn't suffer any setback. So these are the points I wanna point out because it is important to know that this media for us trying to get rid of it, it is not only painstaking work, but it is also painful work because of the damage we do to the roots. But if getting it off is your goal, then it has to be done C or C. Just know what you're up against. Okay, first of all, let's pretend this is the coca husk. I'm gonna do my best and I appreciate it if you're still here and you're going to be using your imagination. So what they do is they open up the cocoa husk or just two halves, they split them down the side, cocoa shells. I have to continue to say cocoa shells because cocoa husk doesn't have the same problem here. They take two halves of the coconut shell and then they stuff the orchid into the middle, close it up, put it into a net pot or any other pot, or they might just wire it and then they hang it in a tree, which works perfectly for those environments. And if I was growing there and had the luxury of growing there, that is exactly what I would do. But again, that's not for us in our climates, clearly not in yours either. So when you have soaked it, it has to be drenching wet. And then you will see fibers like this on the outside. That's a very hard shell, peel it off and all you're doing is peeling it off. I was thinking of doing this with an onion, but it just didn't make sense because the onion isn't fibrous and it comes off way too cleanly. This declining pseudobulb is doing exactly what that cocoa shell would do. You're taking off the outer layers and then you expose the fibrous layers underneath and possibly uh, you are already seeing roots growing through this entire network of fiber. And this is where the problem is going to start. You've probably already caused damage to some roots. Stay brave, stay the course, know that you're gonna to continue to damage roots, but know that you're doing what is best for the orchid in your environment. The way to go around seeing roots, let's say, in and amongst the fibrous cocoa fiber here, is to pull the strands off the root and free the root as best as possible. Okay, so literally it's like one area at a time and you will get braver as you do this if you haven't already done so because this video is way overdue. You will get braver as you do this because you will see gaps and then by the time you get the gaps, you remove those where there are no roots and you will unearth, literally unearth more roots. But this is the concept. It is literally peeling back the fiber one by one, trying to get at the roots without damaging them. And that is why soaking is so, so important because it actually allows you to pull off gently. Even though the layman will be damaged, there will be secondary effects, etc. 
but at least you've gotten to a point after peeling off this outer shell, just like with this pseudo bulb, to get in and then strip every single root from the individual fiber. Now, all that was probably really, really gross to look at, and I understand that, but I did want to do this video because we get it so, so much, and I'm a little bit annoyed. I couldn't find any cocoa shells to do this properly. So I'm gonna cut it off here just because it's probably one of the grossest things that you've just watched. But I'm really hoping that the demonstration itself helps to explain the procedure, also makes you feel courageous that you are going to damage roots but needs must in this case. And know that if you have new roots growing, you won't set the orchid back at all. The new roots are its future. One little top tip before I finish and relieve you of this gross visual is to soak the orchid prior to attacking this job with calcium and magnesium and some seaweed. That'll put some strength into the orchid for the next four weeks while it is going to recuperate from the stress. I also once again apologize Debbie Appleyard for having taken this long. I just couldn't wrap my head around how can I demonstrate what I am trying to say. And even though this was probably gross to watch, I hope that it was helpful. Thank you so much for your question and thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Have yourself a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>